Good boys. Good boys. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to Good Enough Customs. So, last week, huge milestone. Got the rear floor welded in. 99% complete on the rear floor. Um, don't mind these two knuckleheads. They were bored in the house, so I brought them out. Since I'm not doing a ton of cutting and welding just yet. So, uh, <laughs> so last week, we got, you know, rear floor all welded in, everything ready to go. Everything's awesome. Everything is awesome. Everything is cool when you're part of the team. Made our little uh, extenders for over there in front of the wheel well. Um, I forgot these brackets. So I've got to drill the holes underneath for these brackets. First off though, these brackets, the, uh, I'm not sure what material they're made out of maybe galvanized i don't know but this rust isn't actually this bracket's rust this is the old bed floor rust but i don't want to put that on the new bed floor so that and these things are really filthy so i'm going to clean these guys up that's not that's literally just scrubbing them and then sanding down the rust and i'm going to probably spray it with some uh just spray it with some paint just something to keep the rust from coming back probably not going to film that just because it's you know cleaning i ain't worried about that <laughs> so um biggest concern for today is gonna be getting these guys sorted out so where we left off on these guys was uh i welded up you know really kind of ugly ugly you know what i mean <laughs> welded these guys up there i don't like the way it looks it's not symmetrical it's not clean it's ugly as homemade sin and then that side's gonna end up being the same way. So I had a thought and I was just like, you know what? I can measure this out. It's three inches tall. It's about five inches long worth of coverage that we need to get. And it only has to cover about a half inch worth of depth. <sighs> I can make something that'll literally just go over top of this and I can just weld up the outside seam and we're done. So I'm just gonna have to end up cutting all this back out and you know cleaning this up all right so in order to make this thing look halfway decent um I, I ended up grabbing i had this piece of three inch exhaust pipe sitting on the shelf it's like a nine inch long piece it's good for filling gaps you know for exhaust it's about all it's good for that's the reason why i had it up on the shelf was like yeah eventually i'll use it well today's that day so i figure what i can do is i need three inches of height and five inches of width right um, and my goal is to kind of make it, you know, kind of cupped like this and just kind of box it in with just a nice curved front and a little half moon shaped sides. So I have this piece of scrap sitting out, it's two inches wide. I think it's 12 ish inches long. So I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to cut right, where'd it go? Right down the seam. So that gives me a nice straight line to follow. So I'm going to cut right down the seam here, cut down the stream on this side. I only need five inches. So, and I think I've got nine inches worth here. So I only need half of it for five inches and probably actually less than half of it uh, to cover my three inch tall gap there. So, uh, so actually my half inch or my halfway cut doesn't have to be exact. I can just cut that section out on that piece, stick the new piece on there, weld it in, done. So uh, I, I, that's kind of what I thought. I was like, eh, it's probably the cleanest way to do it. Um, I thought about taking some steel, measuring it out and bending it myself and doing all that. But then I, then I saw this piece of three inch on the shelf and I was like, well, crap, that's a lot easier. I don't even have to work about, you know, worry about the curve on here. I just have to kind of, you know, mash it down and flatten it out a little bit because I don't need that much of a curve. So that's one of the things I'm going to work on today. Uh, the other thing that I plan on working on today, because we are so far along on this guy that we're, we are knocking on the door of being done um you know i gotta clean up them brackets back there uh i gotta clean up my welds uh for where we welded these guys on i still have a few welds like this panel i gotta clean all these welds up on him because i i never did same thing over there never clean them welds up so i figure i'll clean those guys up um and then i can clean some of these spot welds up back here in the back where they kind of bubbled up a little bit um and then that's it Floor's done-ish as far as welding and cutting and grinding and all that crap. We're done. 
Uh, so then it's going to be the fun part of cleaning everything up, making sure everything's wiped down nice and clean, doing the degrease, doing the metal etch, and then hitting everything with the pour 15. Um, and then seam seal, and then come back and eventually we're going to put bed liner over the entire thing. So I know I said in previous episodes that I wasn't sure, you know, what process was the proper way to go with that. And as far as putting the seam seal on, do I put it on the bare metal? Do I put it on painted surface? What do I do here? I ended up doing a little bit of digging and hunting around and it actually said most times, most times you want it to be painted or at least have an etching primer on top of the bare metal. That'll give it the best chance to bite and have something to hang on to. Uh, apparently there are some seam sealers out there that are made to go over bare metal. Um, so if you're looking at doing something like this, just check and see what your seam sealer says. Um, the stuff that I bought, I actually haven't even read on it. Um, I tried looking, uh, so I bought two different things, the seam sealer. I think I got the stuff. I think I got it in a caulking tube. Um, and then I also bought this barrier bond seam sealer, it's in a can. I think it's what is a quart, something like that. Um, this is like the paint onable type stuff. Paint onable, paintable on? No, that doesn't work. The paint on version. <laughs> so I can just take a brush, dip it, and you know, kind of lay it in where it needs to go. So uh, I haven't actually read on this yet, but I'm gonna guess that it's gonna be uh, needing to be on top of some sort of paint. Yeah, painted surfaces should be lightly scuffed to proper adhesion. Uh, so it just needs to be a painted surface with some scuffs in it. Just like any type of paint, you need it to have some scuffs so that way it has something to grab a hold of. So that's what my plan is. So my plan is do my little pieces for the front. I'm pointing like I guys can see where I'm pointing at. Do my little, uh, <laughs> my little pieces for the front up here. Uh, get the brackets cleaned up, ready to go, get the holes drilled for the brackets, and then clean up my welds that are up here as well, and then wipe everything down. And hopefully at some point today, it really depends on how quickly things dry because it's cold. I've been running a heater. Um, so it really just depends on how quickly things dry. To, it will dictate how soon I can get the pour 15 on here. So as soon as I get the pour 15 on here, let that cure out for a good day or so. Then I can come back and do the seam seal, and then we can do our uh, uh, bed liner material that we're going to put in. We're, we're going to use Herculiner, uh, roll-on bed liner. Uh, just reading some reviews and watching a few other YouTube channels. Uh, I don't know if y'all guys watch uh, Project Farm, I think is the name of it, Project Farm. Uh, he does some really cool stuff where he, you know, head-to-head -head tests with different, you know, things. And one of them was roll-on bed liners, and the Herculiner was actually the best performing one out of all the little torture tests that he put them through. And it falls within my budget. So, <laughs> so that's kind of the plan. And, uh, you know, a little bit of grinding, a little bit of cutting, a little bit of welding. Not a whole lot of that stuff on this one. Um, a little bit of cleaning, a little bit of painting, then a lot of painting, and then uh, moving on from there. So, uh, so anyways, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to get to it, start measuring stuff and getting stuff cut and get ready to go. So I guess I'll... Uh, I'm gonna get started and I'll, uh, I'll jump back over with y'all guys here in just a few minutes. So I'm about done with the brackets. Uh, you know, got the holes drilled. Got these guys painted on the tops. Still gotta let them finish drying and then flip them over. I went through, hit them with the uh, wire wheel to knock rust loose. I was thinking these felt, these felt a little weird. They didn't feel like regular metal, but they're not galvanized. I was thinking they might've been galvanized or aluminum or something, but nope, they're still, they're just really mild. Um, but like I said, I've shot both of these guys. I, I cleaned all the rust off, cleaned them up real good, scuffed them real good, and then came back and uh, shot them with the uh, with that uh, engine enamel. That's a really good hard uh, paint. So I got that all done, just waiting on this top side to dry, then I flip them over to the other side. So once I get these brackets on the back, finish that part up, uh, I'm still working on a few little itty bitty things here and there, just kind of cleaning up stuff as I go. Uh, but as soon as I get those guys done where they can go on, they're bolted up, they're done. Mark that off the list. Then we can get started on the nitty gritty and I can get in here and start making these little covers uh, and then getting the other crap cut out, all that fun stuff. So uh, just a quick little update there and I'll catch back up with y'all here in a bit. All right, folks, under the truck, figure I'd show you 
with this, the way this bracket mounts up and the way it actually looks. So, uh, it's tied under here, so. <laughs> so there we are. There's our bracket that we're putting in. Uh, I got the bolts just kind of hand tightened in there. And uh, let's uh, go ahead and run them all down. So, uh, that is really tight in there. Um, so anyways, <laughs> so that's kind of what she looks like whenever she's installed. Um, you know, it just supports this section of the bed. So here's your tail pan in case you can't quite figure out where we're on the passenger side. So here's the tail pan. There's the wheel well. Um, this is the support bracket that supports the center section right here. So anyways, there's that. I still got to do the driver's side. And like I said, it's really tight under here, so it's really hard to record anyway. So, uh, so I'm going to get back to it and uh, get back to y'all here in just a minute. All right, folks. So we're going to get started on cutting this exhaust pipe down. Uh, I ended up doing some more measuring, come to figure out that five and a half inches is actually about right. Five inches is a little too short to make things a little tight in there. So I went ahead and marked five and a half inches all the way around this guy so now i'm just going to go ahead and hit that with a piece of tape so that way i can make a good cut all the way around there we go well she ain't perfectly straight but pretty close I'm actually going to put this over in the bench vise so I can cut this side and then cut this other side. So I'll be right back. All right, so we got her split in half. Just knocked all the edges down. Um, it's not exactly perfect, but you know, you know, you know the name of the show. <laughs> so it's not perfect, but you know, hey, it's good enough. So I'm going to take these over to the truck and just kind of well, take one of them over the truck and just kind of see what we look like and what we need to do. So, so I'll catch y'all over there. All right, so over here on the driver's side. Yeah, to try to get away from all this just nasty ugliness. This was what my thought was, just take a piece of exhaust pipe. That may be a little too tall. So what I might could do is just shave down the tips just a little bit to sink her on down. I still need to I probably ought to come over here and cut this stuff off so I have a good, you know, spot. But, uh, yeah, it's a little bit farther out because it's only got a clear half inch. This only sticks out about a half inch. So, right now, I've got like one and a half inches. So, <laughs> so what I may end up doing is taking and trimming these edges down, or trim one edge down, you know, a little bit. Uh, that way, that'll that'll shorten this distance um so yeah yep i think that's what we're gonna do so yeah kind of get kind of get the idea behind what i'm trying to do here is just cover up this little bump out and just set that over top of it and uh like i said it only has to go out a half inch this is an inch and a half at least um so trim her down a little bit see what we can't do but i think this will work all right, getting back to it. All right, a little cut, a little fit, a little cut, a little fit, a little cut, a little fit. <clears throat> I believe I got her. All right, so I trimmed quite a bit off, as you can tell. This thing's not nearly as big as it once was, but she sits just so nicely right over top of that. So, and then looking at this, I've got a pretty good edge there. And, you know, I overshot it. It is five and a half inches. So I actually come back and take about a half inch off now that I'm looking at it. So it should line up pretty good to weld in right down here along this bottom edge. Still got to get the old weld off. Oh, yeah. Also cut out the old crap that was here. Uh, just need to get in here, clean this edge up, get these old you know, welds off down here on this corner and up here on this corner. And uh, this guy should just set right nice right over top of that yeah 
about like that. So it'll sit some, something like that. Um, so now the only thing I really need to do here is make a filler panel that just you know covers this side up and this side once I get my overall length kind of measured out. So I just gotta make a little piece of metal that'll go here, weld that to it. That should sit nice and flush right there. If it doesn't, we can fill the gap with weld. Um, <laughs> and then uh, do the same on this other side. And then it'll just be tack it in, make sure it's good and straight and level-ish, and then tack it in and then weld her up. So that actually worked out really, really well. So I'm gonna get to working on this. Uh, unfortunately, I'm gonna say this week's episode is gonna be a little light. Uh, if I had a little case of the old bubble gut. So uh, haven't been feeling haven't been feeling the absolute best today. <laughs> so so I'm not getting near as much done as what I usually would. So uh, uh, so I'm gonna try to get you know something done. Uh, worst case, I get one side done maybe. Uh, but if you've seen one side, you'll see the other side because they're pretty much mirror images of each other. So <laughs> so uh, so I'm gonna get on this. Uh, make my little side pieces. Uh, actually take that over there line it up get my overall width i need to get measured out knock that off of this end um and then i'll make my little side pieces to fit in there and uh, then maybe we can get this guy you know welded up and have at least one side done so uh i guess i'm gonna get to making these little little pieces i'll be right back all right well we're gonna go ahead and make uh one of the edges or both the edges i suppose since that's not really going to change so all i'm going to do here is just take it and lay it out on a piece of metal little scrap piece i got and then just trace it out and then i'll cut it out with uh with the cutoff wheel and then clean her up with the uh with the flap disc so there's one and there's two i should call her everywhere i look something reminds me of her <laughs> I'm gonna go cut these out. All right, now the fun part. I'm trying to put these guys together and get them tacked. That is always one of the more frustrating things. Get some of this metal off of here. All right. Crap. <laughs> where where am I gonna clamp to for my ground wire? <laughs> uh, hang on. All right, that's better. Now I actually have something that's conductive. I'm on a little makeshift uh, welding table. All right, now let's make sure that guy's sitting on there pretty good. Cut that guy on. All right, so we got our little, uh, got our little trough. <laughs> Cool. So now the only thing left to do is just weld it up. So we're gonna let that cool off a little bit and then I'll hit it with the old flap disc and see what see what she looks like cleaned up. I may have screwed up and needed to have cut that or welded that on the inside. But uh we'll get that figured out here shortly. Well, good morning, folks. So, uh, second day. Yeah, yesterday was a little rough. I, I just, man, my gut was just all jacked up yesterday. Uh, I was really tired, which didn't make any sense. I got pretty good night's sleep. Um, just was not feeling very well yesterday. Um, and really, it felt like I didn't get anything done. Uh, but in truth, I, I did get a few things done. So, uh, you know, we got, we got these brackets on. Uh, back here got those things cleaned up painted uh got the holes drilled got the bolts in everything's good to go there um let's see i do remember putting these bolts in um on the inside for the wheel well um <clears throat> we came back here and cut this out and then uh got that all cleaned up and right before i went inside last night i sprayed this with uh that's weld through primer 
Um, so I sprayed it with that so it'd have something on there. And to let it, you know, set up and dry really good before I did anything else with it. You know, I've still got that side to do. I got to cut that and everything. But I got to pull the truck out for that. So, uh, still hadn't done that. The truck still just pushed up against the wall. So, uh, did go through yesterday. And we made this little guy, which is a little cap for that area. So, uh, <laughs> what you didn't see is, well... If you remember back where I just I had just said, you know, maybe I should have welded that on the inside. Yeah, I should have welded that on the inside. So, uh, uh, so yeah, so off camera, literally right before I went inside last night, because by the time I finished welding this, I was like, I'm so done. I just wanted to go inside, drink a gallon of Pepto, and just sit on a couch. So, uh, it's almost what I did. But, uh, <laughs> so I had to come back and fix this guy so I, you know yesterday before i went inside i went through it i put welds on the inside edge um and it's still got welds on the outside edge so i'm going to take this and uh, i've got to grind these edges down grind these welds down and uh uh just clean it up and this guy will be ready to go for uh you know going on the truck well we can go over here and we can test fit it real quick and kind of see exactly what's going to look like so pretty much something like that so that's kind of what she's gonna look like you know it uh there's a couple gaps there's some gap there but uh that's okay i can weld a gap so uh yeah once this guy gets cleaned up real good um and i get it tacked in right there i'm gonna start welding that sucker up and we'll be ready to rock uh the other thing i gotta do is obviously i gotta paint the back side of this guy so uh i'm gonna do that here shortly and then we'll go and we'll pull the uh, pull the truck out and I'll work on the passenger side. Try to get that done as well today. Uh, maybe film a little bit more than I did yesterday because, like I said, yesterday I was feeling pretty rough. And I was just like, I don't even feel like dealing with it. So <laughs> so, uh, so I'll try to get a little bit more of this filmed today. Uh, but, of course, it's editing day, so it's going to be kind of a short one. Uh, so, yeah, I do apologize again. I, this is going to be kind of a short video from, from what, it, what they usually are. Um, probably not going to get anywhere near what I was wanting to get done this weekend done. Uh, but that's okay. We got really good weather moving in this next week. So I can kind of piddle with it a little bit throughout the week this week. So anyways, enough of that. Let's get back to it. All right. Got her, uh, got her cleaned up. So came out pretty good. And then, uh, I just took and shot it with some, uh, weld through primer on the back as well. Not that it necessarily needs it for the backside, um, but I didn't want to just put regular paint on it in fear that just regular paint, once I start hitting it with uh, uh, with the welds, it'll just boil the paint off. So I figure throw that stuff on there, maybe give it a little bit more protection. That way, whenever I get it all welded up, I can shoot some paint from the backside and try to get this thing as covered as possible. So, uh, so we got that guy good to go. I gotta let him dry. Uh, let that stuff dry out really good, that well through primer. Um, so I guess I'm going to get over here. I'm going to grab this bumper. I'm going to pull the truck over <laughs> so I can get to the passenger side. And uh, I guess we're going to work on that passenger side, getting it cut out, measured, everything done, ready to go. So maybe I said that backwards. Measured and then cut out. Let's let's go that route. So, uh, <laughs> so I'm going to do that, and uh, I'll catch y'all uh, back over there in the truck. All right. So similar to what we had going on over there yesterday. Got this other piece of the uh, exhaust pipe that I cut out. So over here, we're definitely a lot longer over here than we need to be. I guess this side I cut it a little bit closer than I did over there. So we can actually trim, golly, we could probably trim, what is that, an inch and three quarter, two inches off. So we can trim this down quite a bit. And then I got to cut yeah so we can cut quite a bit off of this one i was going to try to make a match but since i've already got this part cut out and it's such a pleasure to cut out as it is <laughs> being that it's tight tight spaces and all uh plus i got another layer of metal directly behind this i figure uh let's not make it any harder than we have to you know what i mean all right, so I'm gonna cut some of this out with the uh, with the uh, four and a half inch cutoff, uh, the electric version. 
But then some of the tighter sp uh, spaces, I got to get in there with a little die grinder with a little cutoff. Um, because you know, once you get down in this area, it just it gets to be really, really tight down there. So, all right, let's do this. So, I went ahead and took this over there, trimmed her down. Yep. I'd say we're about right. So, I'm going to take this over there, trace out the ends, and cut my little side panels and get those ready to go. All right. So, taking a note from yesterday, and I'm not going to weld it on the outside edge. I'm going to weld it, well, actually... I am going to weld it on the outside edge, but instead of cutting these to fit the outside edge of this, I cut them to fit the inside edge so they'll just sit right inside like that so I can weld them up, you know, right here. So, worst case, well, actually, I'll tell you what I'll probably do. I think what I'm going to do is I'll get these guys in place, put a tack, maybe two tacks on the outside here, and then go ahead and just weld it up on the inside. I kind of like the way that ended up looking, so, uh, so we'll go with that. So that's, that's what the plan is. So uh, I think one end was a little bit wider than the other. Yep. So this goes on this end, this goes on this end. So I'm going to get this uh, get this all set up and ready to go. And uh, I'll be back with y'all in just a moment. So, got her all welded up, got her all grounded down, grounded, ground down. So, you can see, came out pretty nice. I went ahead and ran just a small little bead around this outside edge because it didn't quite penetrate all the way through the, uh, all the way through the seam there. But I just shot it with some uh, weld through primer, let that sit and dry. And then I came in here. This one is dry because I shot it last night. So, you know, that's... Eh. That's kind of the, the look we're going for here. So, of course, I'll get that all kind of leveled up and cleaned up and ready, and then uh, we'll weld this guy in here in just a couple minutes. best work <laughs> i don't know what was going on there maybe just not a good enough ground um 
but that was I was kind of boogered so uh, but I pressed on so so what we're gonna do is uh, yeah so I had a little you know a little slice that ran up this way and I kept blowing out this piece so uh, uh, and I've got it down I've got the, the temperature set down where it's supposed to be good for you know 18 gauge now that could be some of the problem is this little piece right here this end piece is actually 16 um, but as I'm getting it good and hot coming on down that shouldn't be as big of an issue um, I didn't check to see what size this exhaust pipe is it's probably a little bit heavier than what this is but uh, you can see I got a little bit of heat in there and warped it yay so that's an easy fix. I just drill a hole and uh, knock it down and spot weld it back in, maybe. But uh, <laughs> so that's why I got the air hose out and was you know air quenching it because I was just like, oh yeah, we're getting really hot. So I heard actually this spot weld pop. So uh, so anyhow, um, yeah, it's not the prettiest thing in the world, and trying to clean these welds up is going to be you know a lot of fun. So uh, I'll get these welds cleaned up, you know. Not right now, but eventually uh, we'll get these welds cleaned up and make this look like, you know, something. Uh, still got that side ready to go. I, I went ahead and shot him with the weld through primer. I've got the other piece right here now that's nice and cool. I can actually pick it up. Uh, got it shot with the weld through primer. So it's pretty well, pretty well ready to go. Um, and it's the same exact process on the other side. Just stick it up there, hold it up there with some magnets, get it lined up, tag it in a couple spots, and then just start buzzing it in. Probably gonna run into the same exact problem. Maybe I'll find a different ground where I get a little bit better connection. So um, I guess I'm gonna get to working on that because that really didn't take too terribly long. Um, it's actually really funny because today, uh, you know, I'm feeling a lot better. I've only been out here like an hour and a half and I've already gotten, it feels like I've gotten more done today than I did all day yesterday so <laughs> so um so i'll go ahead and get this guy rolled over there and get everything ready to go for that that's God, it's gonna be a pain in the butt to weld but uh we'll get that one that one welded in here in just a minute not gonna worry about recording it it's the exact same thing um and then i can get the flap disc out and we can work on some of these uh, uh welds that need to be ground down and cleaned up a little bit uh to get everything kind of prepped and ready for the pour 15 which I don't know is going to happen. It probably, well, it's definitely not going to happen today, but maybe we can get to, uh, maybe I can get to it sometime this week um, during the week so I can get the floor, the floor, floor 15, get the floor pour 15 um, and get that all done. So uh, we'll get back to it. All right, folks. So got the other side in. Um, it's welds look equally as boogery as this one. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know what's going on there. Maybe it's that weld through primer. I, I did remember whenever I was welding, doing all the spot welds on the front when I was doing that, it was a little bit of a chore. That one was a little bit more of a pain, uh, man, because I cut it a little too narrow. So, uh, uh, so it didn't line up exactly right. And I had to jump a pretty good size gap on both sides. So I still got to go through and clean up those welds. I'll do that later. Not a big deal. Uh, probably end up using a little bit of flap disc and a uh, carbide bit. Uh, to get that cleaned up, you know, it ain't going to be perfect. It's just going to be good enough. Um, mainly because it's going to get covered with, uh, pour 15, then it's going to get covered with bed liner material. So, uh, not too terribly worried about it. Um, but that gets, uh, that gets the bed pretty well all sealed up. I mean, you know, the, the, the bed and the front floor, it's pretty well all sealed up. There's a few holes I need to go back and fill in, uh, where I, I, I miscalculated where my, uh, uh, spot welds needed to be so I got a few of those holes I just got to buzz in real fast but th that doesn't take no time so I've actually had a few uh, emails and I think a couple comments uh, people asking about different tools and things that I'm using for this uh, you know this is not a comprehensive list by any means um, but I'll just go ahead and give you a quick little rundown of what I use pretty much on a daily basis when I'm out here working on the shop uh, working on especially floors and all the, the metal and stuff so, uh, you know, not necessary to have two angle grinders, but damn is it handy. <laughs> so I've got, you know, one, basically it's dedicated to flat disc, one dedicated to cutoff wheel. It makes life a little bit easier because, especially with them being different colors, <laughs> because I'm like, I don't need the flat disc. I just grabbed a green one and go. Um, let's see, this one is an old Chicago electric I got. 
I probably got this guy 20 some odd years ago from Harbor Freight. A long time ago. This thing's still running. It's getting a little chattery. The bearings are probably about ready to go. I was noticing earlier when I was using it that uh, it's uh, the speed is starting to get affected a little bit. Um, whenever you're cutting, you put a little bit of a load on it and you can just, you can literally hear the speed drop. Um, this guy's a little, I think it's a Hitachi. Hitachi. Um, yeah, this guy's pretty, this is nice. I really like this one. Um, this one's newer, probably had it, I don't know, six, seven years. Uh, but this is a really good one. Not necessary, but it's really handy to have to. Um, of course, an assortment of, assortment of vice grips. I ended up, a, a lot of my stuff comes from Harbor Freight. I mean, you know, let's, let's face it. Building on a budget, doing things on a budget. You can't go out and drop just, you know, stupid money on like Snap-on and Matco and all that stuff. I would love to, but I just, I don't have the money for that. Um, so a lot of my stuff ah, that I bought recently is from Harbor Freight. So welding clamps, that's a big one. Uh, Harbor Freight has two different versions. Uh, one is the Bremen. This is the good one. Get these if you're going to get them from Harbor Freight. The other is Pittsburgh. These suck. <laughs> they feel flimsy. They are flimsy. Um, I just bought those because I, I needed some in a hurry for something. Um, hell, they still got the tags on. But uh, uh, another thing that you'll need to do is uh, lots of consumables. So don't roll into uh, don't roll into Harbor Freight thinking that. You're gonna buy two or three cutoff wheels and do a floor because that ain't gonna work. You're gonna have to buy multiple 10 packs. I mean, you, you go through blades pretty fast. So I've got uh, these little guys. They're, I can't remember what the thickness is on them, but they're pretty thin. Uh, they do okay. Uh, I've, I've bought a couple different types over the years from Harbor Freight. Uh, the ones that I currently have, I bought a 10 pack of them. Uh, they were kind of the mid price, you know, mid range price. Um, these things are horrible. I, I hate them. I, I wish I hadn't have bought them. I've had to throw away three of them, I think, maybe four, just because they develop a crack in here. Or, uh, you know, now, granted, when I was lowering Harvey, I was using these things and I destroyed two of them. Uh, <laughs> I'm not counting those two. Um, but uh, that was because, you know, they put a side load on. These are not made for side load, by the way. Um, but uh yeah these guys I, i'm not a big fan of and i don't remember what brand they are um but i got them from harbor freight don't like them go ahead and do yourself a favor order you some benchmark abrasive stuff um i haven't ordered cutoff wheels from them yet but i did get flat discs so you can see this is a harbor freight flap disc you can see how thin it is now granted i did use this one this one's used up it's there's nothing really left here um, didn't have to worry too much about, you know, the center falling out of it, like on those, but, uh, you can see it's not super thick. And I think this was like, you know, again, mid range, you know, I didn't want to buy the cheapest, didn't want to buy the most expensive, but you can see how thick or thin that is. And then you get like, this is the benchmark ones that I just got today or uh, just got this weekend. So you can kind of see there's a significant difference and the price difference between these was not much. Um, if you're doing this, you're also going to probably want to get some weld through primer. That's 3M weld through two. Um, got that on Amazon. I uh, got the benchmark uh, flap disc off of Amazon. Most of the stuff I get, I get off Amazon. Pour 15 came from Amazon. Um, let me go over here to my little cabinet. I'll tell you. Yeah, the Warrior. Not, not very good. These are 16th inch thick and uh, they're just, I don't like them. They, uh, they break real easy. But uh, yeah, I went ahead and I sprung for some of the bare uh, flap discs and they're fairly thick. I haven't tried these yet. Um, just trying to find what's best for the buck, you know? Uh, carbide bits, I think I got those from Harbor Freight. Um, step bits, definitely got those from Harbor Freight, mainly because they're quick and easy and they just plow through stuff and if they dull, they're cheap enough you can just go buy another set. Um, drill bits, I've got some. From Harbor Freight, I'm not a big fan. I kind of want to go spend the real money on some real good ones, but I haven't found the ones I want to buy just yet. So, um, I've got my seam seal. I got this guy. I again, bought it on Amazon. Um, did a little bit of research hunting around, and that was the one that you know kind of came more recommended from most folks. Uh, let's see, what else have we got? You're going to need an air compressor. <laughs> You can do this without an air compressor, but man, it makes it difficult. So 
I've got a cobalt. Uh, I ended up, I lucked out on this thing. Um, so little, little word of wisdom here. Lowe's, occasionally they will change the paint color on these. And when they change the paint color on these, the old paint color gets deeply discounted. <laughs> it's ridiculously discounted. So, uh, uh, so I just so happened to see it one day. Uh, they were changing over, they're changing back to black. Um, cause I think there were blue, then they went black and now they're back to black and they'll probably go back to blue, but, uh, they changed from, uh, this blue to black. They knocked this thing down. I think this was $800 was the original price on it. It was something like that, like 800 bucks. Um, and they knocked it down to like three, three something. I walked out the door for like 350 bucks with this compressor, brought it home, wired up a 220 plug, hooked it up. And we've been cooking with Crisco since before that I had a little 26 gallon, uh, central pneumatic from Harbor Freight. Uh, I think it was 150 bucks. Uh, so I had that little guy. It did okay. Uh, but when you're using the air tools, it, it really starts to, you know, really starts to test on it. Um, as far as welder, I got a Hobart. Y'all guys have seen this guy. I used the hell out of it. I'm really pleased with this. Um, this is a Hobart 140, if I remember correctly. Um, now I'm using gas. So I've got the, uh, I've got the Argon. I think it's a 25, 75 mix. I can't remember. But I got the Argon gas um, with the regulator and all that stuff. I believe this thing came with the regulator. Um, I already had a bottle, so I didn't have to worry about buying a bottle. Heads up, if you go to buy a bottle, they're expensive. They're like $400 for that small, you know, that size bottle. Um, now to get it refilled, it's only like 75 bucks, but that initial purchase is ouch. I think when I bought that Hobart, it was like 500 bucks. Um, I went out and looked the other day. They got them, they're, they're, of course, as everything is, everything's going up. So they're like 650 now, but you know, you probably hunt and poke around and see if you can't find one for, you know, on sale or something. I've heard good things about the Harbor Freight, uh, the newer Harbor Freight welders. Um, they're MIG welders and you could use flux core instead of using gas. Um, but, uh, I've heard good things about the Harbor Freight welders. Uh, I haven't used one, so I don't know, but, uh, I've heard they've stepped up their game because my old welder was a Harbor Freight from way back in the day. And, uh, yeah, that thing was junk, but, uh, I, I've heard that they've actually stepped it up a little bit and their welders are actually pretty good now. Um, that's pretty much it, I guess. Um, you know, I did order for my air chisel. Um, apparently they make a bit just for spot, you know, spot welds. I didn't know that. I was just using chisel bit, which is one, re one reason why I was butchering stuff. Uh, but they do make actual spot weld chisel bits. Um, and they're designed to basically hug around the spot weld and bust it loose. Um, I actually went ahead and ordered one because <laughs> I was like, Never know when I want to run into spot weld stuff again, so I might as well have one just in case. Um, I was actually uh, watching Puddin' when he was doing his his 61 uh, Chevy station wagon he's got. Um, he had a really cool one that uh, had like a little spoon type thing. It kind of flattened out and it was kind of like a spatula maybe. Um, and that thing was just eating them freaking things up. And I was like, my God, I didn't know they made those. So I immediately started hunting for them. I haven't been able to find one like that just yet, but I'm still on the hunt. Little uh, wire wheels and cups and stuff like that for your uh, for your drill. You know, again, Harbor Freight. Those are consumables. They wear out pretty good. I haven't had any real trouble out of the ones from Harbor Freight. Some of them are a little off-centered, so they kind of have a weird little rotation to them, but they work okay. But that's pretty much it, I guess. Uh, magnets. I, again, Harbor Freight. <laughs> so uh, uh, so it, it, it does take some tools to do this stuff but you don't have to go broke doing it. Um, one of the other little things that I got is this little guy, little Rolock, little 90 degree grinding thing. It's got the little Rolock connectors on it. I believe I bought this on Amazon. Um, it's a good little tool for uh, whenever you got something that's gonna be you know, seen by the eye, something that's you know, out and about and you need to really clean it up and make it look really, really nice. Those little guys come in handy because you can really get into the tight little corners and really clean them up. And then there's a bunch of different type of uh, uh, pads for it. You know, I think that pad right there is a 120 pad. They have like a 40 grit pad. Uh, they've also got the, uh, they've also got these type of pads, you know, the little, uh, what you call it, scuff pads. Uh, they've got those as well. So a lot of that stuff, man, it, it comes in handy. Um, you know, if you don't have any tools, 
it can be a little bit, uh, it can be something that, that, that's pretty expensive. But like I said, you can get by without all these things that I have. Um, you know, I've been doing this stuff, not floors, <laughs> but general mechanic work and other things. And I've bought pieces and parts and this and that throughout the years. And, uh, uh, you know, now I have a pretty good collection of stuff that lets me do things like this without having to go out and buy a boatload of tools. I threw some of the links down uh, for some of the products I use and stuff like that that are on Amazon. Throw that down there in the description uh, so you guys can check that out if you want. So that's just that's just some of the tools, you know, actually most of the tools that I use pretty frequently, um, you know, doing all this stuff. So, uh, so I guess that's gonna wrap it up. Um, I've gotta get inside, get to doing some editing and uh, get this video ready to go. I may come back out later today and do some more work, but uh, I guess that depends on how the editing goes. <laughs> so uh, uh, so anyhow, I do appreciate y'all guys watching. It uh, means a bunch, keeps me uh, motivated to keep going on this guy. Um, if you got any questions or anything, uh, comments, whatever, throw them down there in the, uh, in the comments. And uh, you know, I read through them all and generally respond to all of them you know, whenever I get a chance. Um, my email address is down there as well. If you want to send me some stuff, I actually had a fella, can't remember your name. Sorry. Um, <laughs> he sent me a picture of his blazer, which basically was missing pretty much from the body line down <laughs> across the entire thing. It was, uh, it was impressive that he's basically replaced the quarters, the floor, the tail pan, the quarter on the other side and the entire bed floor. I don't even know if he had wheel wells that were, that survived. I want to say he had to replace those too. So I love seeing that stuff. So y'all guys feel free to send me, send me pictures of your stuff. I, 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 I dig it. So, uh, <laughs> hats off, man. That, that, that is, uh, whew. I probably would have said no thanks and walked away. <laughs> That's a lot of body work, but, uh, yeah, y'all guys feel free to send me, uh, send me pictures of your, of your junk that you're working on. I love it. But, uh, if you don't follow me on social media, uh, my social media stuff is down there in the comments and, uh, uh I pretty much, I'm on Instagram. I have TikTok, but I don't really do much with it. Uh, I got Facebook. Uh, I've got a Twitter again, don't do much with it. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much Instagram, Facebook. That's, that's the two that I, I generally, you know, hang out on. So, uh, so anyways, appreciate y'all guys watching, uh, tune in next week. I think, uh, I, I got to get with Crook and make sure that, uh, his schedule is going to work with mine to where we can work on this motor. If not, we'll do a little bit more on this, but, uh, uh, but I'm hoping to get on that motor, start tearing it down. I may not even, I don't think I really need him here to tear it down but it'd be nice to have his tutelage. So, uh, <laughs> so tune in next week for that. We're either going to be working on a motor or we're going to continue on with this guy. Um, and then, uh, uh, move along from there, get, get started on the Pontiac. That would be, uh, amazing. But anyhow, uh, appreciate y'all guys watching. Um, if you liked the video, hit that like button down there. That helps. Uh, if you made it this far and you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Doesn't cost nothing. All it does is help grow the channel. So, uh, anyways, y'all guys have a good one and, uh, just remember it ain't gotta be perfect. It, uh, it's just gotta be good enough. So, <laughs> so y'all guys take it easy. We'll see y'all next week.